cool. So here we are. It is almost the end of July mm -hmm. when we're filming this. We're here today to talk a little bit of an update about life, but also this housing market. Yeah, we've been busy. It's crazy. Adulting very hard in 2021. It's been a lot. Yeah, so that's kind of why we've been low-key MIA. We got married um, and started looking for a house. And is anybody who's out there who's been looking at houses this year uh, or trying to buy a house this year knows it is crazy. The market is insane for buyers right now in a bad way. In a bad way. Um, especially if you live in a desirable area, which we do in Charleston. There's just not, there's the supply is not there for the demand that's there. And then you're competing with people from out of town who previous, who had high paying jobs in big cities and now they're remote. And then just people in general, not just people moving here, people who are already here, cash offers and everything, willing to overpay to have something. Yeah. So it's been crazy. Yeah. It was the crazy process to start with. Hindsight being 2020 in more than one way. Um, should have bought a house last year because wouldn't have been as difficult. Wouldn't have been as difficult. Wouldn't have been as costly. We we chose to do the wedding first. Yeah. And then look for the house. Yeah. So we started looking immediately after. We have a friend, AJ Hansen. Check him out if you're in Charleston. You're looking for a realtor. Um, he was our realtor helping us to find something and went all over with us every day after work, looking at different places, trying to find stuff. Um, we were both trolling the Flex MLS all the time. He set us up with a search and uh, a place to look for things. All the time. Constantly looking. We put in a total of three offers. So when I say that, those of you out there who have been trying for months and are still trying to find a house are going to be like, you only put in three offers and you got a house. You were lucky. Yes. The first house was the first house we looked at. Um, we looked at it after work on a Friday and that was the first time that I had ever like really toured a house that I would be interested in purchasing. And I looked at Brad and I was like, is it crazy to put in an offer on the first house we ever looked at? Like it was kind of really great. Everything it we had wanted um, it, it checked all hope. the all the boxes except for one, which was location. It was a little further yes. out in an area of Charleston that we wasn't our first or second choice. Everything else it did, and the layout was I've never uh, seen that layout like this. Such an in the efficient house. layout. Even AJ, our realtor, was like, "This is this is really yeah. crazy." Which good. made me feel better because if AJ was was like, "No, oh, no, like this is a really great house," and then like putting our offer in, that made us feel a lot better. We put an offer in. And of course, in this market, you can't offer asking price. You can't offer under yeah, asking price. Because it's the uncool thing to do is... It, you have no shot of getting it if yeah. you do that. So you're just wasting your time. Asking price is just a number. You're wasting your time to do that. So with this one, the the selling realtor said that it was highest and best offers mm -hmm. by like the following day at a certain time. So we put it in our offer, which was over asking price. It was, we thought, a pretty good chunk over asking price without going too high to where we're going to end up, you know, the value of the house and underwater and all that kind of stuff. Um, we, we, we thought it was good, but somebody offered more than we did and uh, we didn't get it. Yep. The, the big problem is, and, and this is what happened with that first house, somebody offered more, but not only did they offer more, they didn't tie it to appraisal. Um, they said, we're going to pay this much regardless if you accept it. And mm -hmm. if there's an appraisal done and the appraisal is 70,000 under, we don't care, we're still gonna pay it. Yeah. You have to pay cash out of pocket on top of the down payment because a bank's not gonna give you a mortgage right. um, uh, for more than what the value of the house is when it's appraised. So yeah. that was a big thing that we ran into is appraisal is because the market is so crazy, sellers are not wanting to, ex even if the offer's better, they don't wanna accept it if it's tied to appraisal. So we were we were very particular about that, and AJ was like, "You just you don't want to do it um, because it just puts you in a bad spot right from the start." Yeah, which we, I mean, if you guys are also um, young professionals, having to just pay for a wedding and then also paying for a house, and are in the same boat as us about not tying it to appraisal. Like I've 
complained to Brad about and AJ about how like not tying it to appraisal should be like not legal because that's just like not a smart choice for you know just our generation and then just like just I mean for uh, not just for anyone <laughs> like yeah but it's unless, just you, also, unless like, you got money I mean, to I've blow. had several discussions with like um friends who are in the same like you know phase of life as us and also looking and stuff like that and this financially it's a huge burden just because like we're also have loans we just paid for a wedding so it's just like I don't understand I think that is also some like a greater thing that we'll probably try to hit on in this video is just like how do you how do like people with like young professionals how are they expected to ever purchase a house with like not just the current market but just like all of these things that are getting skipped over which are not smart decisions in the long run um with that and I just I don't know I wish someone would have had those conversations with me but I guess like also like just like a market thing it's a market thing it's also the the time that we're in you know there's you see all these memes all the time about uh you know a boomer says well by the time I was 22 I had two kids and owned my own house and all this kind of stuff well yeah but it's a very different day and age today not just individuals being different but the you know we've already been through two financial crises mm -hmm. Crises, 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 two financial crises in our adult lives um, with the pandemic and then, the, you know, the housing crash 2008. So we've already had all this kind of stuff going on and the, it's just a very different world. Um, so it is more difficult to be able to do these kind of things with, with everything that's going on that didn't exist at that time. So anyway, didn't get the first house. We kept looking. Mm -hmm. We looked at a lot of houses. We, we didn't really see anything we liked. And then well, we saw some, but they were like checking some boxes versus not. And I, I just, I don't want to undermine how much like work went into seeing these places. Like oh, yeah. there's like this whole component of like sight and scene and whatever not that people are like buying from out of town um, who can't tour these houses. But like we were trying to look at everything mm -hmm. and we um, like Brad said that we had a preferable like a, our first preference for area but we really just were looking kind of within more of like what we wanted and within a certain budget so like the area was a little bit more flexible as long as it's like a fine distance for me to drive but that also meant that we had more options to look at so we there were drive around a lot dri we were driving driving around quite a bit um AJ was meeting both of us one of us and so like it was like oh can you get out of work early or do you have a meeting or can I can you go look at this between your meetings and stuff mm -hmm. like that so so we kept looking and then dancing um we were dancing but we went so we were we actually had to go to Atlanta uh for one of her friends it was one of her bridesmaids was getting married so we were there for the wedding she was in the wedding and we were down there and still getting the emails still checking everything um and then a house popped up that we were both like, oh, and this looks interesting. Well, then not only is it interesting, it's in the same neighborhood that her coworker, who she shares an office with, lives, he and his wife. And we we're looking at the pictures and she's like, this looks like their house, like almost identical to the layout yeah, of their house. Yeah. Um, so we were interested just because it was, in a, it was in more of the area we were originally looking for. It checked pretty much all the boxes mm -hmm. we were, that we were looking for. That was on a Saturday. We drove back Sunday mm -hmm. early from Atlanta and came over here. AJ met us again so that we could do our own walkthrough. Yep. So we did and it. And then we're like, yes, we're going to put in an offer. Yep. So we put in an offer. Here's the thing that's a little bit weird. We noticed there were cameras around the house as we were looking at it, which that in and of itself isn't that weird. We have cameras. But, you know, they're mainly for us just to spy on Finley while we're not here. Um... But there turns out the cameras were on and they were listening, which a little weird, but it worked to our advantage. Yeah, because we were walking around and just, you know, kind of just talking about what we would do and like, you know, when we have kids and stuff like that, just talking through, you know, what the previous owners did and how we would keep it or change it or whatever not and just kind of trying to picture some of that, our future life in here. We put in an offer and they accepted it. They accepted our offer over the others that they had in part because they liked what we were talking about while we were here. And we got excited. And started down that path. Started down that path. 
um, scheduled a, um, what is it called? Inspection. Inspection. Yep. I remembered all these words when we were actually actively house hunting. I came for the inspection. The uh, Funny, the AJ was here for the inspection too. There were two inspectors, a younger guy and an older guy. And at one point, the younger guy said to AJ, if for any reason this falls through, let me know. I want to buy it. And he wasn't joking. He was he was serious. They both they both said at the end of it that this is one of the best inspections they've seen on a house that's not brand new and even better than some houses that are brand new. That it was obvious things were taken very good care of and that the house was in really good shape. The only things that they had were were quite minor in the grand scheme of things. So that made us happy mm -hmm. that we were excited about that the inspection went really well. Yeah. And then we got the appraisal scheduled. So that was fun. And that's where things take a turn. Plot twist. <laughs> so our house uh, appraised initially. Considerably under. Considerably, we're just going to say that. Yeah, we're just Cons gonna, considerably, considerably under. Um, but the thing that goes along with that is... AJ, our real estate agent, and the seller's real estate agent, both at the same time, pretty much the same time when they got the appraisal, they rolled their eyes when they saw who the appraiser was. So he's somebody who evidently was was well known for being a really bad appraiser, that his comp, he doesn't choose the proper comps, he always undervalues. And the day after our appraisal, we got it, he was suspended from his job for doing such a bad job. Yeah, he could have been suspended before he did our appraisal, but that's okay. Would make um, things easier. Banks will usually not do a second appraisal, but um, our realtor, our lender, um, and the sellers, and the sellers kind of got together. We drafted a letter, kind of defining and detailing some of these um, inadequacies in the um, first appraisal, and kind of petitioned to get a second appraisal. So the bank let us do a second appraisal. There was the other thing that like is important to talk about is like all of this. We tried to time it so that we would have a closing date that um, allowed us to have a smoother trans or a smooth transition after our lease ended at our apartment complex before our lease or ended. before our lease. So we would have ideally liked a month um, overlap just to like move and everything else. Um, so all of this was technically pushing back the closing date and um, still left quite a bit up in the air as like, are we going to have a house at the end of this? Did we need, to, and we needed to tell our apartment complex if we were extending our lease. Um, so we were on that time crunch as well. Um, so we were definitely kind of stressed about that. So second appraisal, it comes and we get the results back and it's higher than the first appraisal, but not by a whole lot. Okay. The sellers were not willing to come down that far. We weren't willing to go up to where they wanted things to be at because of the because now we've had two appraisals. The first one we all agree was rubbish, but when you've got that one plus the second one, which is which was appraised higher but not that much higher, you see a pattern and you're like, okay, you know, the value actually isn't up here. It is down here. They weren't coming down, we weren't going up. So that was that. Yeah. So we started looking again and in earnest, <laughs> right? Uh, trying to find places and go see places. We actually ended up putting in an offer on uh, another spot that we liked a mm -hmm. lot. Um, there were some things we liked better about that one versus the other one, you know, trade-offs. Yeah. But we put in an offer and uh, somebody bid, you know, put in, up there were multiple offers yeah. above ours, even though ours was over asking by a reasonable amount. But then, Dun -dun -dun. <laughs> Dun -dun -dun. about a week after we had parted ways with the house that had accepted our offer, the sellers come back and they were willing to drop down lower than before, not as low as we wanted. Still too high for us to pay over appraised value, out of pocket, all that kind of stuff. We're like, no. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Yeah, there was a lot of back and forth. I Specifically, remember that we were um, we had walked to Walmart that from our old apartment complex because it was like very close and like this was happening while we were grocery shopping and AJ called 
Br- um, Brad, and then Multiple like times. you were just like back and, back and forth. forth, and I was like, I'm just trying to buy some damn turkey right now. <laughs> but all the back and forth was not for naught because we eventually came to an agreement on a price that they accepted. Um, so yeah, after thinking we lost it, a week later we got it. There's still boxes everywhere. We're unpacking. It's gonna take a while. The situation. It's a not fun part. And our floof loves his new yard. Mm-hmm. He thoroughly enjoys going outside. Sunbathing. Sunbathing. He just gets on his back and lays there. Um, playing with us. T- and took him a while to learn that he could pee and poop back there, though. Yeah, uh, off leash, really, off leash. just like that. So it's just he's used to being like, on a walk, on a walk, on a walk and stuff. So, to all of you out there that are trying to buy a house. Good luck. Yeah. Uh, hopefully you get lucky like we ultimately did. Shouldn't be this crazy, but it is. Yeah. And if you don't need to, just hold it off. It might not be as crazy next year. Or it might be crazier. Who knows? Cool. Just so we go up. I guess that's it. Right on. Bye. Okay. There's that.